Okay, so two weeks ago, I signed on to Rocket League and noticed my twos rank was GC1 and my ones rank was literally champ two. <laughs> and I looked and my past two weeks hours on Rocket League were six. I had played six total hours. So since I'm supposed to be like the improvement YouTuber and I'm supposed to know what I'm actually doing, I went into grind mode. In this video, I want to cover the seven things that I did over the past two weeks to roughly speaking, double my speed. And currently while I'm reviewing this video, I'm on like a 20 game tear in both ones and twos. So clearly something in this video worked. I'll let you decide what you think it was. Normally, this is the part of the video where I tell you guys about the Grand Champ Roadmap, which is my live coaching program. But today, I actually want to announce something very different that I'm launching with apparently Jack. For those of you who don't know, I run the GCR, which is meant to help you get from plat through champ up to GC. But as of two weeks ago, Jack has now joined to be the head coach of our Inner Circle program. Basically, this program is designed exclusively for Grand Champ Plus rated players who want to reach SSL and even competition level play. And it's been sick. We've already started to see some crazy results with our first group. So I wanted to let you guys know we're actually recruiting for our second group of 10. We just want to bring on 10 players this next week. So if that's you, DM me on Discord with the keyword pro. It's the first link down below. Click that to DM me and we can talk details about coaching. Once again, that inner circle is GC plus only, but if you're below GC, you can still reach out with the keyword pro and somebody on my team will get back to you about the GCR. So yeah, if you want to fast track your progress to GC or SSL, learn more through that first link in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy the video guys. Okay, kicking off the list, the first thing I've started to do over the last two weeks is actually train my weak side. For most of us watching, we all have one side that we're usually more comfortable on. Whether it's one wall that we like setups on, whether it's one air roll that we feel better with, or whether it's with one speed flip direction we like to use, we all kind of get in the habit of doing the one we like or doing the one we're good at. And the problem is, if you're only good off of one setup, you can end up performing like a a GC off of one setup and a champ off of the next. At least for me, this was becoming a huge problem, mainly with my speed flip and my air roll setup. So over the past two weeks, I've made an intentional effort in free play to train my weak side. Once again, I still only use one directional air roll, but I've been making an effort to use my joystick air roll when I'm air rolling right on all of my normal mechanics, especially when I don't want to. I've done the same thing with speed flips because I used to be way more comfortable with just speed flipping to the left. And what I've noticed is that actually when I'm in game, there are a lot of situations where I can now make a little bit more efficient movements when I'm using my weak side. And when you practice your weak side, when you intentionally try to switch it up, you actually open your eyes to what's possible and it creates a lot of new angles that you can play faster. So this is something really big for me. Go into free play, train the other speed flip side, train the other arrow that you normally don't use, and you should see some pretty quick results in game. Number two, the second thing I've been focusing on in free play is mastering my first touches. Something I notice personally when I'm on low hours is that my first touches are much less precise. The problem is when you get a bad first touch, let's say off of a ground air dribble or off of uh, a wall setup, you have to use extra boost to correct yourself. On the other hand, when you watch a pro or a really high rank player play, you'll notice all of their first touches are super precise. And this is what allows you to be so speedy to the ball and make these really quick plays, more so than even the aerial corrections or things like that. So when I see players over air rolling to try to correct themselves or using all this boost to try to scramble after getting a bad setup, that's the stuff I notice that really reduces your speed. So for the past two weeks, I've been intentionally practicing awkward setups in free play, basically just slamming the ball off the wall, doing air dribbles off the corners or all really close to the net, basically just forcing myself into situations where I have to get really precise first touches. And what this has done is it's made my first touches in game a lot better. And it's just made me so much more efficient moving around the field, which I think has helped my speed a lot, especially in my ones games. One bonus way that you can also, also practice first touches is using the up and then to the right command on your D-pad to basically pop the ball up. This has helped me a lot with practicing my air dribbles and just making sure I get good pops on the ball, which has translated a ton to faster play in my games. Number three, priming myself 
for ranked. Now, this is probably gonna sound like least tactical advice of all, but for me personally, I don't know about you, when I'm actually feeling energized or when I'm feeling focused, I notice I play significantly better in my games. Some people can play at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., when you actually play Rocket League significantly affects how well you play. For me, I found that like my peak time or time when I play best is like mornings or middays, especially after I exercise. And I think it's no coincidence there are teams like are all starting to pick up psychology coaches and trainers outside of just Rocket League itself. If you want to know more about the science on this, I'm a huge fan of Flow State, who's now actually a coach over at SSG. Um, and I remember even talking with Calm just a few months ago about how V1, who I think think just won the regional this last weekend, has been pouring money into personal trainers, into mentality trainers for the guys, and clearly it's paying off. So if you can, cue at a time when you're peak focus, and no guarantees, but you're probably going to play a lot better. Number four, warming up properly. For the past two weeks, I have doubled down on warming up properly because I don't know about you, but I found when I don't warm up, I play like one or two ranks worse. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a perfect warm up, but there's definitely a difference between a good and a bad warm up. Step one, if you're not warming up at all, definitely just start to warm up because not throwing your first two games just to warm up will definitely help you. But number two, a good warm up, in my opinion, trains a few key things. I recommend you train these things before queuing ranked. Number one, recoveries. So this is like air roll slash power slide. Number two, dribbling, carries slash flicks and like bounce dribbling. Number three, fast aerials. So just taking off to the ball quick and four, shooting. What you specifically do to train each of these things is up to you. I personally am a fan of combining workshop maps and free play. If you have training packs that train these specific things, go for it. All I can say is that if you warm up each of these things for just five minutes before ranked, you will play two times faster. And at least for me, I've noticed a huge jump on days that I warm up versus days that I don't. So do with that what you will. Number five play 1v1. For the past two weeks, I've actually almost exclusively, I'd say 90%, 95% been playing 1v1. Now, I know it's not probably what you want to hear, but if you want to play fast, 1v1 is probably the best game mode to do it. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Luke, wouldn't 3v3 be the best to play fast? I mean, the balls constantly go flying around and I have more boost and things like that. And while I do think you will drive fast in 3v3, I don't think it's the best for learning how to play fast. Let me explain. Basically, there's a difference between driving around fast and playing fast. I think of playing fast as being able to preserve momentum, move around in awkward situations, and get unpredictable speed changes. Threes is actually the least awkward game mode of them all because you can usually position well and you have time to rotate and things like that. 1v1, on the other hand, is the most awkward playlist. You're gonna have to shuffle around in corners, be in weird shadow situations, and basically 1v1 is gonna train you in ways that 3v3 can't. So for me, I've been queuing at least two to three games of 1v1 before I queue twos or threes for a while now. And I don't know about you guys, but when I do this, and I can't speak for everybody, but I've noticed when I queue 1v1 first, ranked twos and ranked threes feels like slow-mo. So if you're not playing 1v1, mix it in a little bit and comment whether or not you agree or disagree. The sixth thing I've done to increase my speed is hitting the subscribe button. No, that's obviously not a tip, but no, number six is actually power sliding more. If you've been watching my content for a while, you'll know how big I am on power slide. My opinion is basically no matter what rank you're at, you should probably be power sliding more. Ever since I started watching high ranked 1v1 play and high ranked streamers actually show their controller overlays, I realized how much the pros power slide compared to the average player. You should get in the habit of holding power slide 90 to 95% of the time you land. Because if you're landing any direction outside of literally really straight center, straight where your momentum was going, you're going to lose some amount of speed if you don't power slide. So specifically, I've been going into free play and focusing on always holding power slide when I land, whether that's after an aerial, onto the wall, off to the wall, whatever it may be. And I've noticed that especially when I get bumped around in game or when I get into awkward situations, having the habit of always holding power slide when I land has bailed me out of a lot of sticky spots. So if you currently don't have the habit and you notice you spin out or you get tripped up or you just feel awkward, usually you can actually control that and it starts by holding power side. So no matter what rank you are, power side more, it'll probably help. And then number seven, the final thing that I've done to increase my speed is master 
empty jumps. For those of you who don't know, an empty jump or a neutral jump is basically just that jump you use without a directional input on say a fast aerial or a double jump aerial or any normal aerial like that. A lot of people know that you can use these jumps to, you know, get up quicker. But what a lot of people don't realize is how good empty jumps can be recovering off the wall, recovering off the backboard, or even on awkward air dribble setups and things like that. The reason I like empty jumps so much is because unlike, you know, wave dashes or half flips that most players can kind of predict these days, empty jumps are one of the sneakiest ways to get a speed increase in almost any situation. Specifically, I've been practicing faking setups off the wall, using the empty jumps to get down off the walls, and I've noticed a lot of people don't expect it in game. So this is definitely more of an advanced tip, especially for like the champs and GC pluses, but it's something that's been working for me over the past two weeks. So if you haven't experimented with them, now you know what they are, definitely start learning empty jumps and practice incorporating them into your setups, because if you do, especially at the lower ranks, your opponents are going to be completely lost. So to recap, the seven things I did to 2x my speed, number one, train my weak side, number two, master first touches, number three, priming myself for ranked, number four, warming up properly, five, play 1v1, six, power sliding more, and finally number seven, mastering empty jumps. Thank you guys for watching this, and if you got value, definitely go check out my Twitter and my Instagram, because this was actually a post over there before I made it to a YouTube video. And I love to turn ideas that I see over there into videos here. So I'll have those linked down below. Otherwise, only other thing you should probably do is join my Discord for more free stuff. And of course, if you're absolutely just sick of being hard stuck, then DM me for coaching and I'll help you out there. As always, thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, peace.